Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and today I'm going to try to make the most complete guide to choosing your first ship in Star Citizen, as the last of three videos around the current free fly event. In some respects, doing this is particularly tricky because there's a sale going on right now, and there will undoubtedly be future sales too. So I'm going to base this video on their non-sale prices, since I don't want to have a video that will be instantly outdated. A lot of videos on starter ships simply try to compare the two that are on the Getting Started page on the RSI website, which is simply the tip of the iceberg. The second tier are the packages that are available in the Pledge Store. This simply requires that you create an account first, such as to participate in a free fly event or participate in Spectrum, and then buy the package from the Pledge Store. But then, thanks to the CCU program, pretty much any ship can be your starting ship. Which brings up a good question. What makes for a good starting ship? But a bigger question is, why spend real money on any starter package other than the cheapest one? Since you will soon enough be able to earn UEC in the game to buy the ship in the game with UEC. And just spending a ton of real money to advance seems like, well, it'll win. And frankly, denying yourself the sense of accomplishment through advancement that is part of what is rewarding about persistent universe games in general. And the short answer is that it is because you really know where you want to start. Let's say that you've looked around in the game and the thing you find attractive is the idea of being a space trucker. That's what really wants to be in this game. You want to be in your imagination, a space trucker. But the two cheapest packages, you are going to have to spend a lot of time in the game before you even start to be a space trucker. Now with the Freelancer as your starting ship, you're going to start as a space trucker. The only thing the freelancer is missing is mud flaps. Now, eventually your space trucking life in the game might take you to a Max, a Starfarer, or even a Hercules. But starting with those ships not only isn't practical, as you cannot afford to fill them, but denies you the enjoyment of building your space trucking business from just the freelancer. And at least as long as we are in Alpha or Beta, building up from just the freelancer is kind of a meta loop that you will be re repeating after each wipe. But having to restart after wipe with not being a space trucker at all might feel like, well, too much of a step back. So let's look at the general categories of things you might do as a new player. First of all, crewing for others. Never ignore this, as it can be both financially and socially rewarding. For example, find a friend with a hurricane and just rip through the PvE bounty hunting missions will be quite profitable, even with sharing the payouts between the both of you. So if you're crewing, what do you need to ship it all for? Well, mostly for getting from one starting location to another cheaply. Also, I'll give a plus in this category for having a bed, since it adds to the places where you can end or start a crewing assignment. So for example, you've arranged to meet up later today at an outpost to crew for somebody. So you can fly to near the outpost and then log out in the bed, and then when they're ready for you there, you can just log in right away and be in the right spot. See the benefit? Also, having a bed is just generally more useful in the verse. Number two, ground security missions. Again, your ship is mostly serving as the way to get there and back, although having some loot storage is a definite bonus. Three, space security missions, such as bounty hunting, claim jumpers, and halt the illegal surveillance, the space combat stuff. Four, atmospheric security missions, like the former, but with the extra importance on aerodynamics. Five, investigation missions without retrieval, such as identifying bodies. Loot storage is beneficial, but not required. Six, investigation missions with retrieval, such as black boxes. Real storage space is mandatory for these. Seven, package delivery missions. Ideally, the ship can hold enough packages to have more than one three-package mission going at once, because chaining missions improves profitability per hour. Number eight, taxi missions. I know these were taken off the roadmap, but I suspect that they were removed because they needed the nav mesh feature. So I suspect that they may return one release following the nav mesh being working right. So I'm including them in the list so this video won't become again soon outdated. But that leaves open the problem of predicting what ship will work for mission type that doesn't exist yet. My minimum expectation is that it needs a seat other than the pilot seat and ideally also a toilet, shower, and some sense of luxury. Nine, trading. You can trade in any craft with just one SCU of storage, but it won't be a sensible use of your time compared to other forms of beginning activity, such as delivery missions, until you get a certain size hold. 
in general, I think this falls in at about 40 SCU. Although, of course, it depends on the commodity prices. Number 10, mining. Although you can mine with a multi-tool, it also just isn't profitable compared to other beginning activities until you get up to having a rock buggy or a dedicated mining ship. So that will be my requirement for a beginning mining ship. So let's start with the two starter ships that in normal times are suggested by CIG on the Getting Started page. Although when specials are being run, CIG will sometimes switch it up like they are doing right now by pushing the discounted 100i in Nomad. And you might be wondering why just two ships and why these two? Well, it is marketing psychology. If you give a prospective buyer no choices, they tend to feel not in control of the purchase. And if you give them too many choices, they can become frozen with indecision. So giving just two or three options is an important choice, and having them be less than $49 puts them in a price range associated with a good PC game and not a massive, unusual purchase. Another thing about giving just a few choices is a new buyer is that you don't want the decision to be too difficult. Not that one choice is obviously best, but that for a certain individual, one will be. In the case of the Aurora versus Mustang, it is a heart versus head thing, or maybe a left brain versus right brain. If you want a ship that you look good sitting in, and the universe looks good while you are sitting in it, then the Mustang is the obvious choice. If you look at the fact that it has a bed for logging out at remote locations and an interior cabin that can easily load and unload small boxes, then the Aurora is equally obvious. But let's look at the starting missions for each of these two ships. The Mustang. Crewing? Good. Bed log out? No. Ground security? Only fair because there's little space for storing loot. Space security? Good. Atmospheric security? Good. Investigation without retrieval? Good. Investigation with retrieval? Poor. Package delivery? None. Taxi? None. Trading? Too small. And mining? No. Aurora? Crewing? Very good because bed log out is yes. Ground security? Good. Space security? Good. Atmospheric security, eh, fair. It flies and looks like a brick. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, good. Package delivery, yep. Taxi, no. Trading, too small. And mining, no. So let's get move ahead to the ships that in normal times you don't see pushed at the start, but you instead just need to go to the pledge store and look at the game packages. And for this, I'm only going to look at starter packages that include just one ship. Sure, the Praetorium pack also includes a game package, but that really shouldn't be regarded as a starter pack. And that is why I'm not going to include the Constellation pack, because that would include the Merlin as well. Two ships. Now, moving from the cheapest first, normally that would be next up the price, would be the Pisces Expedition. And in a word, this is Star Citizen's brethren to the Star Trek original series Shuttlecraft. So if your plans in the verse began with imagining yourself being a shuttlecraft pilot, then this is the shuttlecraft package. It's not really there as a dogfighter, but only because it doesn't quite have the maneuverability of a dedicated dogfighter. The Pisces. Crewing. Excellent, because you can land internally on the Carrick and many other ships. Ground security. Good. Space security. Good. Atmospheric security. Fair. Investigation without retrieval. Good. Investigation with retrieval. Very good. Package delivery. Very good. Taxi. Yes, it has a total of three seats. Trading is too small. And mining Just not. But overall, a little ship with many possibilities at an attractive price. Now, normally next on the price scale would be the 100i, which shows what a great deal the current free fly offer is. Normally, it would be hard to see why not just to get the slightly more expensive Avenger Titan, but with the sale pricing, it's almost a no-brainer, combining even more stylishness than the Mustang with even easier in and out and storage of, and the Aurora. As a fighter, it is fast and nimble, but not quite having the punch of other ships in this price range. So, looking at the 100i, crewing, very good, bed log out, yes, ground security, very good, space security, good, atmospheric security, quite aerodynamic, very good. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, very good. Package delivery, very good. Taxi, no. Trading, too small. And mining, no. Next, normally going up the price list, would be the Avenger Titan, which has a great deal of popularity, both because of its versatility, but also being the least expensive ship, having a size 4 nose mount, which is standard equipped with a gimbaled size 3 Gatling. 
So, the Avenger Titan. Crewing, very good. Bed log out, yes. Ground security, good. Space security, very good. Atmospheric security, very good. This is a quite aerodynamic ship. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, very good. It has a nice cargo deck, which also makes it very good for package delivery. Taxiing, no. Trading, too small. And mining, no. The rock just plain old won't fit in it. Next up the scale is the least expensive pure dogfighting starter package, the Anvil Arrow. And in a word, this ship is nimble, and it is particularly standing out as being nimble in atmospheric flight. Whenever you see somebody posting a video of hair raising skimming across the surface of a planet and through canyons, it will almost always be in an arrow. But you have to be sure that dogfighting, just dogfighting, is going to be your thing. So looking at the arrow, crewing, actually very good because it can take up such a small floor space when it's landed and the wings are folded up. Bed log out, no. Ground security, poor because it has a general lack of loot storage. Space security, very good. Atmospheric security, excellent. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, no. Package delivery, definitely not. Taxiing, definitely not. Trading, nope. And mining, no. -oh. And then we get to the normal position price-wise of the Nomad. And while it has more cargo space than less expensive ships like the Avenger, 24 SCU still isn't quite enough to be profitable as a trader compared to, say, doing package deliveries, for which a smaller cargo hold also is fine. What really sets the Nomad apart in the current game is being the smallest ship that can carry a rock mining buggy. So this is the mining starter ship, since the prospector is a bit pricey to be comfortable to suggest to a new buyer. Another thing to consider, although it is perhaps way too far off, is that when discrete item recovery versus just grinding of the tier zero salvage package gets implemented in the game, then the combination of the tractor beam and open bed will make the Nomad a big player in component salvage trade. So the Nomad. Crewing, good, although it has a large footprint for trying to land on many ships. Bed log out, yes. Ground security, good. Space security, good. Atmospheric security, good. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, very good. Package delivery, very good. Taxiing, no. Trading, it's again, it's just too small. And mining, yes. Yes. And now I'm going to go out a bit on a limb here and predict that just more expensive than the Nomad will be the non-sale positioning of the Hull A starter package. Yes, the Hull A is looking likely for 3.17, and I have some exclusive leaked photos of the finished version of the ship. The Hull A has all the markings for being in a starter pack as the very least expensive cargo ship. Now, a good question is how the cargo career path, starting with the Hull A, will be different than the freight career path, starting with the Freelancer, but I suspect that it will have some distinct features. We'll have to see, but the Hull A is exclusively for cargo. Will a less expensive 48 SCU cargo ship take some of the sparkle from the Cutlass and the Freelancer? Maybe, but those ships are much better armed than the Hull A, which makes them better able to deliver into less friendly locations. Not to mention being far more versatile in what they can do with their cargo space, such as carrying buggies, hover bikes, salvage components, etc. So the Hull A, crewing. Fair, it just doesn't seem practical to use a cargo ship for personal transport. Ground security, poor. Space security, poor. Atmospheric security, poor. Investigation without retrieval, a bit overkill. Investigation with retrieval, it depends on whether there's some internal space for cargo boxes, we just don't know. Package delivery, same thing. Taxi, no, although it might have a jump seat, we just don't know. Trading, good. The cheapest ship to be usable at trading, which is good because it's about the only thing you can do genuinely well. And mining, no. Next higher, and breaking into triple digits when measured in U.S. dollars, is the Cutlass Black starter package. And the Cutlass Black is an extremely popular multi-role ship and the least expensive starter ship package with a manned turret and a co-pilot seat. So it can be seen as the beginning of multi-crew gameplay in the starter game packages. So the Cutlass Black. Crewing, fair, because it's a bit large for landing on many ships, and you are now graduating from being crew to looking for crew. Bed log out, yes. Ground security, good. Space security, very good. Atmospheric security, good. Investigation without retrieval, good. Investigation with retrieval, very good. Package delivery, it's very good at. And taxi, yes, although it remains to be seen how much those jump seats will credit you for comfort. Trading, yes. And mining, yes, it can hold a rock buggy. Next up is the veteran fighter ship of the lineup, the Hornet F-7C, 
which is a hard recommendation at its price, not because it isn't a competent medium fighter, which it is, but it does not seem to be at present a very popular medium fighter. So you we well better to start with a lower level fighter like a aero package, and then at the next fleet week sale, use the CCU option to build your own starter package with a fighter you really want to use, such as the Gladius starter package or a Talon starter package. And finally, the largest standard starter package that fits under my criteria, the Freelancer. Currently, the archetypical space truck, as I said, missing only the mud flaps. The Freelancer, crewing, fair because we are now getting a bit big and we're getting into the realm of needing crew rather than being crew. Bed log out, yes. Ground security, good. Space security, fair. Atmospheric security, fair. Investigation without retrieval, good, although perhaps a bit overkill. Investigation with retrieval, very good, although again, a bit of overkill. And package delivery, very good, particularly if you combine the package delivery with tactically buying and selling cargo at the package delivery points. Taxi, yes. Trading, excellent. And mining, yes, it will hold a rock. So now we get to the third category, and that is to use the CCU process to basically change your starter ship to be whatever ship you want. You might even want to do this for some other more expensive starter packages, because when you do this during one of the major sales, such as the Fleet Week sale and the IAE Expo Week, you will also upgrade your starter package ship to 10-year insurance. Now, it is debatable how valuable 10-year insurance is, since we don't know how expensive in-game insurance will be, and the timer on in-game insurance won't be started until the game is ready for live, certainly years from now. But since many of these ships are only available at the limited time sale, it's when you're going to have to do it anyhow. I'm not going to get into details on each one of these ships since the video is already going long, but here are some of the possible candidates for a build-your-own starter ship. And again, I am selecting ships that are reasonably priced as an initial purchase in the game, and to support beginning gameplay, either for a new player or immediately after a wipe. Again, working from the least expensive up, first, the 300 series, essentially if you wish your 100i starter package had more cargo and bigger guns. Next, the Reliant Tana, a competent two-person light fighter at about the same price point as the Arrow. It is the only Reliant worth considering as a starter ship, as the others have two specialized roles not supported by early gameplay. Next, a somewhat weird choice is the Herald, because its core gameplay of data running is not only not in the game, but nowhere on the horizon. But it still has the best straight line acceleration and top speed in the game, and has an interior with a bed that can handle a few boxes. So if your usual reaction to trouble is running away, nothing runs away better than a Herald. The Gladius, a very well respected light fighter, a bit tougher and more expensive than the Arrow if just a little less nimble. And at about the same price point as the Gladius, the Hawk, which is intended as the beginning bounty hunter game once bounty hunting will require you to transport the captured target. The Buccaneer, a Drake light fighter with a lot of bang but not much durability. The Talon, a striking but also very competent light fighter, particularly in atmosphere. It does carry a slight alien tax, but overall a good entry in the light fighter category. If you simply cannot wait to get started on big rock quantania mining, then you can get a prospector as a starter ship, but honestly it won't take long to get to 2 million UEC in-game with rented rock buggies and a nomad. The Sabre is a popular, if pricey, stealthy medium fighter. It may be more appropriate to have a cheaper fighter as a starter ship and make the Sabre an in-game aspiration. And the Vanguard series, although technically a two-seater, they are worthwhile if you like your fighters slower but tankier. And the real high world price might again argue for it not being a starter fighter, but an aspiration to buy with in-game earning. But if you have a good enough starter fighter, your best aspirational in-game ship purchase would be the Hurricane at 1.2 million UEC at Astra Marta. Then you will have both your good single-seat fighter, plus an amazing two-seat ship shredder. And finally, the Cutlass Steel. No, just joking. You don't want the Cutlass Steel. Now, for an update on my Grow the Channel ship giveaway, as of the time of recording, we are at half the subscriber goal and a third of the membership goal to trigger the giveaway of the winner's choice of one of two definitely way bigger than beginning ships, the Anvil Liberator ship, shipping ship for shipping your ships, and the Misk Odyssey long duration exploration carrier. One entry per video, members are entered automatically, and if a member, as of the date of the video, they get both ships. For others, just be a subscriber and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what I said the Herald was best at. And finally, thanks to Proho80 for using my referral code STAR CPG65NPL. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond, your Ray's Guy.